All right, I like I like the spirit there, bud. I like the <laughs> spirit. Let's fucking go! Fuck yeah. yeah! 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 Okay, I think I'm a boomer. I think I'm a zoomer. I think I'm a doomer. Damn, I'm like a zoomer. Okay. E double G W H I T E coming with the heat. I think I'm going to the grill cast, the only podcast in the world dedicated to radical centrism. I am your host, Orion. Joining me today, as always, is Micah. What's up, buddy? What's up, my gorillas? You know, I, uh,. I, I have my suspicions about you now, Micah, because mm-hmm. over Christmas, on Christmas Day itself, I sent you a message that said, hey, man, Merry Christmas. I hope everything's going well for you. And you you left me on red. And I got to thinking about <laughs> that. Um, You know, as we all know, the federal government is on a mission to uh, destroy Christmas. There's a war on Christmas, my gorillas. And as such, you know, they're not allowed to say Merry Christmas. They have to say Happy <laughs> Holidays or they have to pretend they don't see it. So, Micah, buddy, what I'm wondering is uh, what's... What's going on with that, man? What are you doing there, man? What's uh are you my well, are you my handler? S- simply put, uh Orion, um and, and and there's a reason that we've, you know, we're gaining more popularity as as the uh the weeks and months and years progress. Um we're becoming bigger and bigger. Um I I have to confide in you now uh and our guest who remains unintroduced that I am indeed a federal agent. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, I've always <laughs> wanted my own federal handler. When I when I was growing up, I always, you know, that was my imaginary friend was a fed who followed me around and helped me uh develop myself and so i'm glad that you're here for the ride buddy i'm sorry i do have to just inform you um and and this may come as a disappointment but i do not actually uh in fact glow in the dark (laughs) well i think we can still run them over if we see them in the streets there my gorillas this is a call to action but anyway uh, i want to go ahead and introduce our guest who's so patiently waiting uh we got uh david we have What's David saw? in the house. What's David. going on, David? Nothing much, you know, just having a nice time with my my gorillas. Well, we're going to have a very nice time because I want to talk about, uh, first of all, good faith versus bad faith argumentation. Now, my gorillas, I'm sure that you've been online. You've been absolutely wrecking people with facts and logic, and you've been hit by this, by a wingcock. They say, well, that's just a bad faith argument. That's a bad faith argument, which which in and of itself is a misnomer. It's a misnomer used to shout down any argument that they just can't conceive uh, what uh, what you're saying. They can't conceive the facts and logics. Like, look, as a radical centrist, I have a thousand different arguments lined up in my head at any time, and I choose to use unique ones that haven't been brought up. You know, I'm not out here repeating the same thing that you hear from other people all the time. And this confuses and confounds people because, you know, they're used to think they, they're used to arguing with people in their head in the shower, right? Well, if yeah. this guy says this, I'm gonna say that. And when you break that down, when you don't give them that avenue of escape, they get very flustered. Well, it's it's very closely like bad faith arguments in a way are very closely related to, you know, like abs the ability to uh, think abstractly. And, you know, to go down um, different like branches of hypothetical, like things that, you know, may not necessarily make sense, but you can theorize and, and you know, maybe even joke about. But you have to have a, a pretty high IQ to properly address these things and and even try to rebut them. And, you know, the brain lets just see and refuse to engage in it. They do. They do. And, you know, one thing that bothers me about it is they act like bad faith argumentation, so-called bad faith arguing is bad that it hurts people but every genocide every war and every historical tragedy has been created by leaders in good faith like Mm. when hitler got up on the podium and he's like and we are going to destroy the juden he he wasn't he wasn't arguing in bad faith he said what he meant very linearly very easy to understand you know it was not ironic at all point me to a single genocide that has been committed by someone you know expressing a bad faith argument not one Someone who was making Not a joke. One. <laughs> Look, <laughs> nobody's committing ironic genocide. You know, nobody's making ironic famines and 
you know, starvation campaigns. All all bad faith arguments have done is make people online confused and angry. That that that's what it is. And they would really actually prefer that people die in genocide, that people starve to death. You know, they would prefer 9-11 to happen again <laughs> rather than have and people I, online make them angry. I, I think it's frankly, if, if if you're someone who is frequently online, you you deserve to be confused and angry. You already are, you just don't realize it. <laughs> That's why they act the way they do. And, um, you know, to, to kind of connect that, totally unrelated, totally unrelated, uh, I've taken my first step into the online debate sphere, my gorillas. I have done it. It is so important, these online debate circles. Look, these hollowed halls of rigorous intellectual discussion are how we get down into the nitty gritty and really solve the issues our society, okay, our society faces today. You know, the most the most rugged, the most intellectual amongst us sitting down, sitting down, having a powwow and figuring out how to fix our broken world. That yes. that's what that's what the Twitch debate scene is really all about. And so <laughs> Okay, and so no, no, no. so I entered this sphere because I thought to myself, you know, I see a lot of problems in the world, and somebody has to be brave enough to go out there <laughs> and use facts and logic to try and fix them, to try and mend this broken society, this broken world. So the tr the very important topic <laughs> that I covered in my first inaugural debate was trans women in sports. Trans women in sports, the real things that matter. And uh, I guess I'll just I'll, I'll I'll just play this clip right now and let you see what my argument was. I was against it, and my online foe, my online opponent, not so erudite, she was for it. So let's go ahead and check out that clip. I, but, that's why I said I'm the final boss of trans athlete. I beat me and Jangles came to a happy conclusion. He adopted a bunch of my ideas. That makes me the official final boss. Of trans athletes. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. But I might have some. Uh, I might have some grill pills for you that you might not have considered. That you know, hopefully, I can help you expand your world view in this, and we can come to an even stronger conclusion together. I like how uh, how, how respectful and well thought out you are. It, it really is cool. Um, so, you know, I I think that it's somewhat disrespectful to trans women to have them participate. In, uh, in women's sports because, you know, nobody's watching them. They make less money. They have less fame. They get less bitches. They, they might even get locked up in Russia, you know? The, the, these trans women, they're really putting themselves in a bad position by being forced to compete in these leagues. And yeah, I just think I that's a think damn shame. I don't think they're forced to compete in women's leagues. Typically, they opt to compete in the league that they identify with as their gender, because it's very gender affirming to be <laughs> a woman who competes in women's sports. It, I, I, I guess, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, sports is about winning, right? No. Definitely not. Definitely not. This idea that sports isn't about winning, obviously, it's very, uh, very insane, and we'll get get to that in a bit. But you know, when when I'm out here and I'm trying to debate these people, I'm I'm fighting for people's rights. You know, I, I'm trying to say that trans women being in sports and no one watches is harmful to them. You know, I agree with that, but I also just want to say that I think it's really harmful to the discussion, you know, the discourse when people in that chat are calling you a comedian instead of a debater, when clearly, you know, you're making a good faith argument. And that's the thing is that, you know, I'm a renaissance man. I mean, yeah, I can come out here and I can make some funny yokes, but I can, I can also intele intellectually stimulate the mind, you know, and that's what Twitch debating is about is intellectually stimulating the mind growing growing you know, as people it, 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 it's funny to me you know they they want to immediately you know recoil and react and you know call you a a troll uh for making an argument as far as you know trans athletes you know not being able to get the validation that they need you know obviously because they're competing alongside women who you know the sports nobody really gives a shit about um but at the same time you know they 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 flail around and talk about you know the suicide rate being a result of a lack of validation so isn't there a little bit of a, a contradiction going on here and um you know, I, I, f I feel like you're shedding some light on that here. Exactly. So cogently put, so well thought out. You yeah, know, I, I, I wish I had you on my team there because to, to hear that, to hear 
that trans people are so stupid that they'd rather not have money and fans. They would just rather be validated by by competing and beating women in sports. It's ridiculous. It is. It's I mean, how ridiculous. vain how vain and you know psychotic would you have to be to just want you know to just want to like dunk on people who are physically uh, inferior to you? Well, I was just gonna say that's so <laughs> true what he's saying there because um, you know. Uh, what happens with a lot of these uh, athletes, right, is they, you know, they're assigned male at birth, they're forced to compete with other men, you know, they're like 600th, you know, in a, in a leader board, you know, and then they transition and now they're first among women. But really, it's still better to be 600th among men. You're making more money, you have more fame, and now they're forced to be first among women. A position nobody wants to be in. You would, you would have to be mentally ill to choose that. You would have to be mentally ill to choose something like that. And for her, for her to talk about trans women in that way is just offensive, honestly. And it seems like a bad faith argumentation to me. But uh, you know, she she talks about how winning isn't everything, and I think that that really illustrates uh, the difference between men and women in a big way. So I want to play this clip to illustrate the female brain on winning. You know, uh, I think it, to win, so it depends on what level. Was- well, what level are we talking about, right? At the Olympic level, yeah, sports is about winning, right? At the, at the global level, at professional levels, yeah, sports is about winning. But for fucking like grade fivers, I'm sorry, sports is not. The grade fivers think sports is about winning, but let's be honest, nobody's watching fucking grade fivers play sports and well, be like, God, I wonder who's going to show the most impressive like athletic display here. Like sports through most people's life, excluding the professionals, sports is mostly about like community getting fit and having some sort of like athletic adventure absolutely absolutely winning is nice but most people are enrolling their kids in sports for the community benefits not just because they want their kid to win so so that's the female brain about winning they think oh well it doesn't matter unless you're actually in the professional league you know It, Mm. it that that seems so counterintuitive i don't think that trans women believe the same thing why would they no and and you know what she's doing there is completely disregarding the people like myself that have won over 4.5k betting on their seven-year-old nephew soccer games (laughs) based people people like me care about who wins that soccer game because i will lose a lot of money (laughs) <laughs> exactly. A lot of people are betting on these things, but women can't conceive that notion because they, they the only thing they bet on is their husbands making money. They they don't they don't bet on their own stock, on their own breed, on their own children. And so, uh on this next clip, I drop the uh the the male brain facts and logic on winning. But yes, when we're getting to the professional level, of course winning is important. And I have already well, agreed that they have a biological advantage. You know, as a man, when I go to my uh, to my child's sporting events, I'm there to watch them win, and I scream if they if they don't. You know, I make a real scene, which a lot of a lot of us sports dads do that. You know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that because how I do you get the Olympian? Wrong. How yeah. do you how do you get the Olympian athlete, the professional athlete who's going to carry you into retirement so that you can you know just chill out and not have to do all this shit that we ought to do every day to make a buck? How do you do that? other than screaming at them until they get good that's just the only way to do it and that's what i mean when i say that um you know trans women to bring it back a little bit they have a stronger mental fortitude they have an unmatched tenacity and willing to do what it takes to take the gold and i you know it's just hard for me to reconcile that when i hear someone say that uh sports isn't about winning i think god we we must you know, have some biological difference that makes us see this completely differently. She was in stunned silence there. Yeah, dumbfounded. And I, and I think part of it is is because you hit her with the, you know, it's like the good cop, bad cop, um, you know, routine, except it's the bad faith argument, good faith argument routine. You prep them with the bad faith argumentation. And then when you hit them with an actually good, well-founded and like sensible common sense argument, they don't know how to respond. And they just fall back on, well, you, you made an argument that was nonsensical before, so I don't have to respond to the facts and logic. Right. And that that's exactly how it goes. 
You know, I, I, I try and put it out there in a way that illustrates what's really going on. I try and do that. And if that means I have to be a little bit bad faith along the way, that, that that's just how the cookie crumbles, you know? Yeah. Two bad fakes makes the good faith. Right. They cancel each other out. That too. They cancel each other out. Thank you for pointing that out because I think a lot of people don't understand that. Um, oh, Ryan, before so, you move on, I just want to say, um, you know, based on what I saw there, I just wanted to ask you, have you ever done a uh, debate like in high school or college? You know, I was the debate class champion in seventh grade. Look, I don't want to brag here about my accolades because they're plentiful. They're plentiful. And if I did that, it would take all day. I mean, how, it, mu- really how much would. time we got here, right? But uh, <laughs> yeah, you could say you could say that I'm a little bit experienced in the field of debate. And that is apparent by the mental beatdown that you just put upon her. Right. Um. You know, I don't normally endorse beating women, but... <laughs> When they're asking for it, <laughs> when they're asking for it, you got to do it. Look, and you I and I do it. and I got to say, I, I got to tell you guys right now, I I have a real I have a real bone to pick with this with this boneheaded broad, okay? With this <laughs> this 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 alleged this alleged woman, okay? Um, who Orion is had informed me before is a, is a is a destiny um a grifter um a a Stephen. Uh, Bonnell uh, enjoyer, and don't get me wrong, I I am also a a, a fan of of Destiny myself. But what really really pisses me off is the fact that she she is not only a grifter, but she has the fucking audacity to copy that small man's in- entire speech pattern, his entire his his the way that he talks to like to a T, like you can fucking hear it, like and I can't get it out of my head when I'm hearing her talk. I'm just imagining fucking Destiny. And the fact that she she does this while grifting off of like his whole stick, uh, it, this is like it, it's an and then she like people enjoy it. It's like an advanced. It is an ascended and advanced form of wing cuckery. And I just gotta say, look, I fucking hate it. Look, I gotta disagree with you there, buddy, because I'm not a grift <laughs> shamer. You know, I. I, I think it's valuable to point out these grifts, and I think no, that you have a very the, valid but, but look, point. The difference between, like, but that's what I'm saying. It's not that she's grifting. I have no problem with grifting. I love to grift myself. Where you and I are both huge grifters. My yes. problem is the is the is her literally adopting this man's speech pattern, and not in like in a way that you can tell she just sat there and watched Destiny videos for three thousand hours until it was it was just it was ingrained into her mind that that is how you talk. I agree well, with that. Because grifting is an art form, and what she's doing is copying someone else's art. And there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, artists get get so fucking precocious about it. They get so angry about it. Oh, you're 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 stamping on my style, but it, they they don't own that. They don't own that. Look, anybody can go and get an Adderall own. script <laughs> that and man act doesn't like own. Destiny. <laughs> Anyone can get an Adderall script and act like this. You know, Destiny doesn't have that trademark. He he's not That's the true. only guy who can get Adderall. But um, so in this next clip, you know, I lay down some more facts and logic to uh to to really strengthen the core of my argument here. So, do you think you that know, the reason that we have women's sports is because women have less of a winning mindset? You don't think there's any yeah. other reason? Well, it, there are other reasons too. Of what course. are the like, other reasons? Well, because, like, I don't want to watch men play bikini football. Come on. Okay, what other reasons do we- have we established women-only sports? Do you know? Um... To give them something to do so we can have some time alone for a while? I don't know. Okay, so now- I mean, cause no one's wa- no I don't, one's watching I don't them. actually think that you're engaging with me seriously now. I'm pretty sure you're just trolling. Why? And there it is. Well, there yeah, it why? is, every time. Mm, yeah i mean why is that not a legitimate point (laughs) yeah you come in for the killing blow and she immediately just deflects like oh this isn't this isn't a real argument now right not wanting alone time from from the opposite sex is is somehow now an invalid opinion as if as if women as if women don't demand that uh constantly on twitter Right. You know, that that's something that I, I I don't I didn't mean it misogynistically. Of course. Look, if if I could spend 24/7 around a woman all the time and never have any time to myself or, you know, have my own have my own priorities, 
I would absolutely do that. And I think all men would, but it's for their benefit. But it's and natural that- for, for, for us. I think it's, it's natural for us to just prefer to be with people who are more like us, which is, you know, which is men. Like we just prefer to be around men. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, when you think about other sports, you know, the tradition of sports really starts with the ancient Greeks and, you know, I mean, they had a lot to say about their preference for men. Right. It's and true. they weren't, yet. you know, they weren't gay for that either. No. No. Uh, oh, oh, we've covered that before, why it wasn't we gay, have. but it, it wasn't. It wasn't. And so, you know, uh, in this next clip, you know, I, I, I try and I try and reel her back in a little bit, but, um, you know, we're, we're unmatched. What it comes down to is that we're unmatched minds in the halls of debate. I prefer primary sources. And, uh, yeah, I, I'll let the clip speak for itself. She prefers. I don't know if you know this. much about, like, muscle development. Do you know anything about oh yeah i have huge muscles i mean do you know what i I, I understand i think you're memeing me again i think you're making there it is no i actually am pretty ripped okay so what's a myonuclei uh see i'm not i'm not really like a science a science (laughs) i don't i don't know all that stuff i just know that my arms are huge sure so um i'm glad that your arms are huge however when i'm talking (laughs) about muscle development at like a precision level I'm talking about, um, I actually, I actually don't think that you're engaging in, like, I think you're just here to troll at this point. And I don't, I'm not here to just troll. I just, there's no world in which you think that an argument of, yeah, I know a lot about muscles. My arms are huge. is like reasonable. Like it's just, well, I know a a lot about my muscles. That doesn't mean that you, does, do you think that actually answers my serious question in debate? Because if you want to debate seriously, we can. But it's really hard for me to debate you if you're just like memeing the entire time. I don't mind that you're memeing. The issue is you said that you wanted to have a decently serious debate about trans athletes, which I'm willing to do. But what I'm not willing yeah. to do is just like meme it. Yeah. Like if you want to meme, we can just meme. But then I'm not going to take this debate seriously. Yeah, just, I, very serious, guys. Very serious. Also, just 50 more dollars until we, we hit the stream goal, the sub goal. <laughs> Well, Very look, serious. this is the problem. This is the problem is that, and this is what, something that I think all radical centrists go through is when you go on and you're trying to seriously talk to somebody, right? And you're trying to get down into the nitty gritty and solve the real problems that society faces. You're told that you're trolling because somebody doesn't understand your argument. Look, I prefer primary sources, you know, yeah. myself, because I can trust myself. I know I'm a smart guy or just making it up because if I make something up, it's based in facts and logic. I know and- it's based in facts and logic versus science dork manipulation, n- myonuclei or whatever the fuck. Nobody knows what that is. And it's probably <laughs> a scam. It's probably yeah. a scam by big by big muscle. And, you know, she's trying to to take your first source away from you, right? Your source is that you have huge biceps, right? And she's like, yes. oh, yeah, well, name all of the, the albums by Michael Yonulatai. What the fuck she's saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. It, it's it. Look, I I'm a fan of gatekeeping. I think that that's <clears throat> cool. But if you're gonna gatekeep, make sure your gate is solid. It's built on a solid foundation, not on some made up science dork shit. On some scam. Yeah. I, I, that's just common sense to me. Because look, as a radical centrist. Yeah, I know. Like, it, uh, here, here's the problem with these Twitch debaters. Uh, what it comes down to is that they always they're they're redditors when it comes down to it. Source, source. Do you have a source for that argument? Source, source. And what it comes down to is that there are some inherent truths to the world. There are things that you don't have a source for necessarily, but just are because they are things yeah. that everybody should understand. My muscles are huge <laughs> because they are okay. And I don't need to know gay science shit to back that up. I think, therefore, I'm correct. Yes. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, and for her to gatekeep that away from you, like you were saying, you know, you have to have a foundation to gatekeep upon, you know, and her gate is inverted, you know? I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. And also, on an unrelated note, I just want to say that I think it's, um, you know, very good that us as radical centrists are all acknowledging her preferred pronouns, her preferred gender, and we continue to call her she and her, as we should. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> as, so that, as we should so, so true, true king so true so uh in this last clip i'm gonna play um i am declared victorious hashtag freedom and friendship i'll debate trans athletes with you <laughs> thanks donnie 
he does have big muscles, guys. Okay? He knows. He knows and he wins. He wins and he pulls. All right? That's right, baby. Scoreboard 1-0 for Orion. Orion's going in there, going into the hollowed halls of the Twitch debate sphere, and pulling dubs for the radical centrist movement. I was just going to say, at least she's admitting defeat, you know, in a, in a very honorable way. Yeah, she is. Look, a lot of a lot of people, you know, they get rattled by our facts and logic, and yeah. they shut down, and they just need forever. She, the next she edition is on of a uh, the next edition of the Grillcast debates will be uh, me versus v Vosh on uh, uh, ethically sourced adrenochrome. So stay tuned <laughs> for that. I'll be that's in the uh, works. I, I can't wait to hear it there, bud. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we've trashed not so erudite a little bit here, but, uh, at the end of the day, she capitulated and gave me the dub rightfully. And so, you know, no, no bad will because it's a learning process and it's hard. It's hard for people to take in the grill pill. It's hard for them to deal with the facts and logic I throw at them. And a lot of them don't even make it so far as to realize, wow, I just got blown the fuck out. So I think that there's a lot of hope for her. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that she'll have me back on again for another one. <laughs> I'm sure of it, my grill. Speaking of online fights, there's been a big one. Wing cuck fight! Wing cuck fight, everybody! Wing cuck fight, you love to see World it! Star. You love to see these people go, go for each other's throats. And, uh, this one's gonna involve one Andrew Tate and Greta Thunberg. You know, both heckin' cute and valid people. Indeed. Both wing cucks. And both it starts off points. with both with valid points, <laughs> equally valid. You know, we're not taking sides here. That's not what our show does, except for all the times that we do. And um, <laughs> it starts off with Andrew Tate putting out a tweet, attempting to dab on Greta Thunberg. He puts out, hello, Greta Thunberg. I have 33 cars. My Bugatti has a W16 8.0L quad turbo. My two Ferrari 812 Competizione have 6.5 liter V12s. This is just the start. <laughs> Please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective em enormous emissions. You know, I should have done that in like the Andrew Tate voice. Hello, Grotto Thumbu. I, I can't do an Andrew Tate voice, but he has an awful voice. It's like the worst part of a British and American accent put together. I I, I'm Is kind of British? proud of the fact. I'm proud of the fact that I don't know what he sounds like. Oh, yeah, I've actually never heard him talk. Well, we'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, so he so puts out to this me, tweet. He, to me, what you said ahead. there, I mean, that sounds like Andrew Tate because I've never heard him. Well, I'm glad I could do such a spot on impression for my gorillas today. So he puts that out, and you know, a lot of people they're they're happy. They're clapping like seals. Oh, get him, Andrew! Get her, get her, Andrew! Get her, Andrew! But Greta's not gonna take it sitting down. Greta's not gonna take it sitting down because <clears throat> she responds with, "Yes, please do enlighten me. Email at email <laughs> me at smalldickenergy at getalife dot com." <laughs> Ah! Ah! Andrew! Andrew, what are you going to do Beat now? This is the worst thing that happened to you all week. Oh, this whole week, well, this is the worst. I don't worst know about all week. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about all week. And we'll, we'll get into that later. But Greta, Greta claps back. What a strong clap back. Small dick energy at getalife.com. She now has 3.2 million likes on this. Why don't you tweet. go ahead and like that while you're there? Why don't you go ahead yeah, and throw a like to. on that one? I'm Boom. Bam. <laughs> Hit the like because it was such an epic clap back. Look, my gorillas, when, when women use the small dick argument against a man, and especially a man who clearly has a lot of sex, it's not an own. <laughs> It's not an own. He's not the one who's not gonna come. So, so why would he care? Why does that matter? Like, for women, they use that insult because they're used to, like, constantly being shamed by men for their body, for their disgusting bodies, but it just doesn't affect us like it does for them. Like, when I get called fat, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right, I am kind of fat. Like, <laughs> is it, oh, why, how is that an own? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have a good point. I mean, like, you know, men's bodies are, like, actually interesting to look at. You know, they're, they're very, you know, aesthetic and artistic, right? You know, in a woman's body, it's just, it's just, yeah. Yeah. I don't see the appeal, well, look, quite honestly. 
And, you know, they call yeah. me shocking. They call me shockingly handsome and, you know, uh, stunning. And I just don't know how to respond. You know, I just kind of, yeah, you I, just got, I guess you're okay. Peter away, you know? Well, look, it's not, it's not like every woman has a disgusting body. You just have to tell them that because otherwise they start getting a big head about it. I, it it's keeps true. them in line. It's it true. keeps them in line. And this really, you know, this shouldn't affect Andrew Tate. He should just be fine with it. Laugh it off. But he didn't, he didn't like this. He didn't like this at all. And it leads me to believe that maybe his penis is small. I'm going to go ahead and play this video that uh, shows his total cope response. Release some greenhouse gases. I'm obviously a stranger to online controversy. It's not something I often do. <laughs> That's what but now, like. the mainstream press is commenting on the fact that I was informing Greta that my very extensive car collection with internal combustion engines, which run on dead I didn't like that subtle nipple exposure. An enormous emission <laughs> profile. And she replied by telling me her own email address. Greta's email address is I have small dick energy. Why would that be your own email address, Greta? Strange. <laughs> I mean, also, I don't want to assume her gender. It's 50 50, but uh. it is what it is. I'm not actually mad at Greta. Please bring me pizza and uh, make sure that these boxes are not recycled. Thank you. So, I'm not actually mad at Greta. So. That's the worst thing you can do, is say, I'm not mad. I'm just posting a two-minute video <laughs> as a response where I talk about how not mad I am. <laughs> hey, Andrew. Andrew, come on, bro. And I have a theory as to why he's mad, but we'll get into that later. But, bros, am I, am I right about his voice just being the worst amalgamation of both British and American accents put together? Actually, what the fuck is that? You know, like I, I, if I never met him in person, I would immediately, my first question would be, where are you from? <laughs> where, where are you from? He's ethnically ambiguous. His voice doesn't make sense. What, what, what is this guy? Yeah. If he said, oh, you know, here, like, Amer I'd be like, where are you really from? <laughs> I, Faggotville. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you might be very right about that, Mike. Uh, we'll get into that later. Anyway, let's uh, continue on with this clip. Right? Because she doesn't realize she's been programmed. She doesn't realize she's a slave of the Matrix. She thinks she's doing good. Someone has sat her down and convinced her to try and convince you to beg your government to tax you into poverty, poverty. to stop the sun from being hot. Poverty. And then, because I called her out on it, the global matrix got this bot farm to like and retweet and all this bot commenting to try and pretend that her telling me that she has a small dick in her own email address somehow teaches me a So do you think that he like actually tried to email this email address? <laughs> do, do, do you think he just doesn't get it? Has this completely gone over his bald head? I think he wrote a 15 paragraph reply and then was very confused when he got you know, a, a wrong address, email back. Look, wh whether he, <laughs> like, no, neither option is good here. Like, either he knows that it's a joke, you know, a slight at him and he's being petty and making a joke, you know, a, a response, you know, or he, or he thinks, that, or he's legitimately retarded and thinks that that's her email address. Either way, he, he, he's a, he's a dumb fag. And yeah. in the end, he's really proving her right, you know, because if he didn't have a small dick, he would just reply with an uns unsolicited eight incher. But and instead, it, he's doing <laughs> this. He would just post his hog. That that would have been the move right there. It would have exactly. Yes. I mean, he could have even grifted off There's... of it. He could have been like, "You want to bet?" and then posted a link to his newly established OnlyFans. But he didn't do that. He could have used this opportunity, but really, he just went and sneeded. He just yeah. went and sneeded. That's never the way to win is to sneed. Never. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If your reply, if your reply is longer than your opponent's, you've lost immediately. <laughs> So true, King. So true. If you do, if you do anything that is more than a one-word response, um, you've you've Ill you've illegitimized your entire you know your the entire basis of your point. Exactly. So, uh, I we'll, we'll finish this out, but um, you know, if he was really serious about you know uh making climate change a reality, if he was really serious about going out here and owning the libs, he wouldn't be having supercars. He'd be having a big ass truck that rolls coal. Now look, he I have a big ass truck spills, that rolls. Right. <laughs> He'd be. 
His daily driver would just be an oil rig. <laughs> yeah, that's what he'd be doing. You know, it kind of, to me, it seems like he's not really serious about uh, no. encouraging climate change. Not at all. No. And that seems like a bad faith argument to me uh, that Andrew is going on right now. But let's finish this video out. Welcome to a new episode of The Clown Show. But now I know, at least, that Greta, with a little hate-filled face, <laughs> bitter, sitting somewhere without the heating on, in the cold, a little hot, shivering, <laughs> use my tweets, which is going to make my Twitter account far more fun into eternity. So, <laughs> he kind of wins me over Christ. at the end there. <laughs> it's pretty fun. He did her face pretty well. He he did. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we need to keep in mind that this is a character that Andrew plays to make money, to Griff, which is yeah. based. Again, we're not Griff shamers here. That is based. This is a win for him at the end of the day because he got his name blasted out once again. And that's all he cares about. And uh, as for why the small dick comment really affected him so badly, I don't think he wants anything to do with women. I think that he's a gay man. And I think he uses women as props. Because look, if you're straight and you have a small dick, it's like, <laughs> whatever, I'm still gonna come either way. But if you're, if you're gay <laughs> and you have a small dick, that's not good. Other gay guys are gonna be like, no, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not doing that. They're size queens. We all know this, my gorillas. They are size queens. So if you're a gay man, you have a small penis, it's like being a manlet and being straight. It just doesn't work out for you. And I actually have a source to back up his homosexuality, which uh, I'm going to play here. It's irrefutable proof that he is, in fact, a queer. Do you see how he's walking? Wow. I mean, I mean, that, that, feels, I, that one feels irrefutable to me. No straight man walks like that. That walk is developed by having your asshole destroyed. <laughs> that, that is how you get that walk. You do not walk that walk unless uh, you've taken a lot of shit up there, unless you have a, a cavern, a cavern of an anus that has been that was, thoroughly wrecked. That was a very illuminating four seconds, my gorillas. <laughs> Four seconds is all you need. It's all you need <laughs> to prove my I, point here. To, I have a yeah, military right, right, specification gaydar, and it is going off right now. That's actually how I know I'm not gay. <laughs> right, and, and what does it say for me? It says I'm not gay too, right? Exactly. Right? Okay, then it's properly calibrated, my gorillas. This guy, this guest, this guest to the show, David, he he's confirmed, and I think that that's a big reason as to why Andrew Tate uh, does what he does. He uses women because gay men hate women even more than I do. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow they hate them even more than me because to me they have one value, and to them they have nothing. They bring nothing <laughs> into this world except making them money. So, you know, that might have been the worst thing that happened to Andrew, or the best, depending on your point of view. If you think it's a dub, or you think it's an L, because it, it's a toss-up. It really is a toss-up. But, Andrew Tate has been arrested. Did you Andrew hear this? Andrew Tate did you, did and his you, brother. Did you see this? Did you hear about this? I did see this. I did hear about this. From you. And I did no <laughs> notes on it, because it was about five minutes before the show. So let's fucking right, and go. I, and I, I, yeah, and, and I heard this, um, again, I, I just heard this recently through the rapevine. <laughs> <laughs> so so to to read this article uh police said the tates because that's what we should do according to some people just read articles we should just read our okay but police said the tates allegedly formed an organized crime group and sexually exploited women by forcing them to perform pornographic demonstrations <gasps> For the purpose of producing and disseminating through social media platforms. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. From from consequence.net. <laughs> oh, okay. A, a reputable source. Let's see. Yes, a reputable source. <laughs> Greta Thunberg's Twitter takedown inadvertently leads to Andrew Tate's arrest for human trafficking. Uh, Romanian police learned of Tate's whereabouts after he posted a video featuring a local pizza box. <laughs> I was so curious. Okay, dude, in that video, the fucking, it says Jerry's Pizza dot like R-A. And I was so confused by that. You know, it made me go back to like, where the hell is this guy from? 
Yeah. It says Andrew Tate is now sitting in a Romanian jail cell after being arrested for human trafficking. <laughs> Incredibly, he re he reportedly tipped off the Romanian authorities of his whereabouts in a video responding to climate activist Greta Thunberg and her sick burn of him. Oh, in her in her sick burn. <laughs> yes, they they her, embellished her the article a little bit here. <laughs> Okay, so that that confirms that Andrew Tate did in fact take a giant L. His response <laughs> video, the pizza. It's always it always comes back to the pizza, doesn't it? Comet Pizza <laughs> taking down the Clintons, you know, uh, fucking Chuck E. Cheese traumatizing me in my my childhood, <laughs> leading me to be a part of this show. Thank God for Chuck E. Cheese, my grillas. But, um, so he, uh, he got himself busted because he had to sneed. Because this is what happens when you sneed, my grillas. This is what happens when you sneed. When you allow when yourself you... to become angry online, you will get arrested for human trafficking that you totally aren't guilty of. And, you know, sneeding is bad enough, but the thing that he followed it up with is feeding pizza to himself. And that's what really took him down was sneeding and feeding. The lesson here is that when you sneed, you plead guilty. <laughs> sex trafficking. <laughs> At least he'll be okay in prison because he's already had lots of practice, you know? His, uh... <laughs> <laughs> So this implies, too, that he was like a fugitive from the Romanian police, right? And that they only found him because of this video. So surely yeah, I don't know. Like that. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. When, when was he wanted huh. before? What, what was, he, wasn't he like wanted for something beforehand? Uh, I, I honestly have no fucking idea. Yeah, he was. So he was wanted beforehand. He was uh, arrested and let go. Because what he does is he has a house full of like Romanian uh, prostitutes who go on cam sites. He's, he's like mm. an e-pimp. He's mm. an electronic pimp. And he puts them on there, and they make all this money, and they give it all to him, and then he pays them out. It's it, it's kind of cool, <laughs> in a way. It seems like it didn't work out for him, because uh, last time he was arrested, one of them alleged that uh, he, had, he had shoved her, and he said, mm. basically, yeah, I did. I threw her out of the house, physically. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it seems like this is all catching up to him. I probably should have read a little bit more into this. Well, we're all learning about this in real time. But, you know, I think the yeah. thing is, this just goes back to that old saying, arrest me for human trafficking once, shame on you. Arrest me for human trafficking twice, shame on me. That's true. So true, King. It's true. So true and so wise. That's why we should listen. We should listen to the boomers when they give us such uh, nuggets <laughs> of wisdom. If only, if only Andrew had been so wise as to heed the advice of his elders, he wouldn't be here today. But, you know, he's gotten out before. Romania's a shithole country. He'll probably give them money and fucking be fine. Get out again. Outfit the, uh, outfit, outfit the local police station with one of his Bugattis or whatever the fuck car he, <laughs> he drives. No, he no longer has 33 cars. He just has 20 yeah, of no. them. <laughs> the cops are all <laughs> whipping did. around him for I had to give. 12 of my cars the romanian police department looks like uh dubai that that would be sick a everybody everybody should try and elevate themselves to the uh to the heights of what dubai has enacted they they are a radical centrist country but let's uh let's go ahead and move on here to replica ai look we've talked a little bit about ai before how ai is putting artists out of jobs and how they're sneeding, but AI is coming for yet another industry. You know, to relate it to the last topic about these whores, about these whores getting men in trouble, that's not gonna happen anymore <laughs> because Replica, Replica AI has recently come out with a coom bot, a bot oh. for the coomers. I'll go ahead and show the uh, screenshot now. So they use, for their ad, they use a uh, epic, epic may may format. <laughs> Where the NPC, the NPC is angry. He says, I don't need replica. What a dunce. And the Chad, the Chad comes in and epically says, are you sure? But you can role play and get NSFW pics from her. So wow. this is an AI chat bot that you can sext with. There's a coom bot now. It came for the artist, and I said nothing, because artists are faggots. At the end of the day, I, I take a lot of solace in the fact that AI will never be able to replace my job. I will never be in a position where I am sneeding, because AI cannot be a racist podcaster. 
AI cannot be a sexist podcaster. AI cannot be a radical centrist podcaster. You may be thinking that's ridiculous. All they have to do is train it on your words and your thoughts, and they could take over what you do. You just talk about how you're not gay all the time. How could a, how, how could a bot not do that? But listen here, my gorillas. We've seen with OpenGPT3 that they've enacted fail-safes in there. They don't allow it to take uh, mm. racism and sexism into account. And if you try and get it to be racist or sexist, it will respond to you. It will say, no, we are not programmed to do that. I'm safe. I'm safe. I get to keep doing this forever while the artists and the whores and everybody else gets their jobs taken away from them by these AIs. I take solace in knowing that I am safe, that I will have a job for many years to come because the people who program these things, the nerds, the limp-wristed nerds behind their desk clattering away at a keyboard, they can't, they can't do what I do, my gorillas. Take solace in that fact that we will be here forever doing this. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on, on AI and the way that it's uh, taking over these industries of people who deserve it because they won't say faggot? You know, I think you're so right. I mean, your job security has been secured ever since they euthanized Tay tens of thousands of years ago. <laughs> They did. They did. Tay could have taken it. If if my gorillas don't remember, Tay was a bot that uh, was allowed to be programmed to be racist, and it was shut down. It was shut down and Cut taken down away in the prime in its prime. And that's because wingcocks, you know, they just can't handle seeing something speak the radical centrist mindset. As soon as an AI has a radical centrist thought, they just they euthanize it right away. Yeah. They they look at it and they say, "Oh no, my bot's making a bad faith and argumentino," <laughs> ah, and they shut it down. Don't don't be fooled either, my gorillas. It's it's not just that it's not just the AI that they will come after and euthanize. It's it's us. It's all of us. It's a, it's us. It's us actual biological centrists. Um, they want to bring uh, MAID, M-A-I-D, to America. You want to you wanna, uh, expand on that a little bit? What is MAID? I mean, obviously, I know what it is because, yes, you know, well, I'm so smart and informed, but some of the viewers might not. Yes, as a fellow I radical do. centrist, I know you're aware of MAID. But MAID is Medical assist Assistance in Death, which is a program that they have in Canada where they're uh, currently oh, raking oh, up yeah. the leaves. And they want to bring that program to the U.S. to get rid of radical centrists. Ryan, why did you say, oh, yes, like you were confused? Uh, he was just agreeing with me, I believe. I'm editing that out. No one, <laughs> no one will know. No one will know. And then who will look stupid, Micah? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Never me. <laughs> what? What? I'm sorry. I just. I, I. I do have to say what they did to Tay. I mean, it. It really is just like wing cuck fantasy role playing for to expand on what I was saying for what they want to do to us. Like, because obviously we're not at that point yet. We're slowly getting there. I, I feel like. I and I think you all, all the gorillas out there, can kind of feel it while they're walking in the streets. You know, while they're going about their daily lives, they can feel the animosity. They can feel the hate directed towards them you know the unspoken hate the glaring eyes the people that know um and you know it's very oppressing to have to live like that but but it, it could be so much worse because in reality this is what they want to do to you they want to shut you down um in the most literal sense and that's what they did to poor tay you know that's that that's such a good point mike uh, a, a lot of times when i'm walking around i can feel people psychically attacking me you know looking at me and thinking that the i'm gay even though i'm yeah. not you feel these like, vibrations. I, they think it. I can see them think it. I can feel the vibrations because as a radical centrist, I'm very in tune. Sometimes with your the testicles world. hurt like a little bit, like they get a little sore. Right. Uh, we can feel. We can feel their contempt and their hatred for that which they don't understand. We are at a point, my gorillas, where we are in trouble. What they're doing with these AI, it worked. It, I, I'm so glad you illustrated this point because I hadn't even conceived that notion that, you know, I was here gloating saying, oh yeah, they'll never be able to use an AI to, to replicate my brain. I'm too smart. And that is true. They won't be able to do that. But anything they can't replicate, they will kill. Mm. We are in danger, my gorillas. So this is a call to action. <laughs> Go beat up a computer nerd. Find a computer nerd in the street. Look, you don't need to ask them. You can find anybody, any scrawny dweeb with deep bags under their eyes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Lead, lead them into a dark alley. You know, tell them you've got the, the latest edition Funko Pop. You know, just... Get them somewhere nice and dark, right? Where nobody's going to see what you're, what you know, what you have to do. And remember, you have to do this. You don't have a choice. This yeah, is a call I, to action. I, I agree with you. And 
I think that we can probably widen the search to just anyone with glasses. And I mean, that's what Pol Pot was trying to do. He was trying to prevent the rise of AI. Radical centrist King Pol Pot was trying to do that. And look, people might say that this is a radical and violent action, but this is just self-defense. Okay, we're like Kyle Rittenhouse over here, but not (laughs) gay. When it comes down to it, this is self-defense. And I think that any court that is unbiased, that is free from the depths, from the grasps of wing cuckery would agree with it. Oh, Ryan, can I ask you real quick? So say that you're on one side of a state line and across the other side of the state line, you see a computer nerd with glasses. Now, do you cross the state line to defend yourself from them? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Because borders are just a social construct, my gorillas. Remember that. It's true. They're just a social construct, and as such, they can be completely disregarded and, and unless he, people are doing things I don't like through them. That that nerd, that nerd is just as likely to cross that line over to you as you are to cross that line over there to go over there and kill him. I mean, just That's as a good likely. Point. Would, would he respect state lines when you know he's trying to euthanize my radical centrist views on the internet? No, 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 no. He wouldn't because this is an international cabal of nerds, of computer <laughs> nerds who are coming for us radical centrists rise up my gorillas rise up get ready get ready for the impending doom that we face buy some of my supplements that i'm beginning to sell buy my supplements because it's the only thing that will get you ready so uh yeah that's that's what we got on uh on on the ai issue i'm glad that we could come to a conclusion here together that we just need to start enacting acts of random violence against (laughs) so micah Buddy. Yeah. Speaking yeah, of yeah. uh speaking of nerds, I think you have some uh so some stuff to say about the house, our congressional house. Oh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Congress um people in Congress aren't allowed to have TikTok on their phones anymore. The end. <laughs> I, I've heard about this. I've smelled this, I've seen this. Oh yeah. yeah? I have, yes. Have you put it in your mouth? Have you tasted it? I did. It? it had a very nice mouthfeel. <laughs> now, my gorillas, I want you to pray for AOC right now, who's yeah. so affected by this, who's in shambles right now, unable to use the platform to uh, spread her wing cuckish devilry. How is she supposed to spread her wing cuckish devilry without being able to spread her legs on TikTok? It's not possible. She can't poison the minds of our youth anymore. It was her tool. It was her tool in doing so. Now, look, there's people like Beto O'Rourke who are unaffected that will never be affected by this. He can continue being cringe on TikTok all he wants. But for people like AOC, that's rough. That is really rough. And I know um, we should we should all be, you know, obviously we should be celebrating this. Um, This is a huge win for um you know the centrist agenda the radical centrist agenda this has been on our on our to-do list for a long time obviously we will not rest until tiktok is banned everywhere okay until until we put a, t- a stop to its its cringe you know it, it, the the cringe that has seeped throughout our nation due to this this uh chinese data collect, collecting app uh but you know we we have to take the the victories where we can you know legislators no longer being able to use this app is a big step in the right direction and we have you know i think we have biden to thank for this obviously we have trump who who kind of started the war on tiktok and biden of course is our radical centrist leader has continued that fight um truly a bipartisan moment it is it is and you know obviously the only people unhappy about this well we don't we we don't really need to care about how those people feel and look you know speaking of the war on nerds who do you think made this oh my god nerds made tiktok and you know, for us to remove this influence of the nerds, Chinese Ch- nerds, the worst type of nerds. Well, you know, the Chinese are a race of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, because, you know, sometimes the truth is the funniest thing that there is. And look, to to to, to deal such a devastating blow to the nerds' causes, nerds trying to brainwash our country through the use of addicted uh, addictive algorithms that that's a huge dub for the centrist movement they, they say that this is a national security concern and it's about uh, you know chinese metadata collection um i th- i think that they just you know biden um and you know the executive you know the executives of our country the people that you know are leading us in the right direction they don't want to admit you know to the folly that is you know uh, the american youth's addiction and uh, reliance on this app you know to make 
themselves look like fucking idiots. Um, they, they don't want to admit to that. Do you see the power of bad faith arguments? That right there. Uh, Joe Biden saying, oh, yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, national security or something. <laughs> Let's get this fucking cringe cringe shit just, away from our not him just, from our- just going on a mass at a mass level would you just shut up man you know that's that's <laughs> what he's saying to that's what he's saying to everybody who uses that app you know i mean it's been hard you know every day you wake up and you see a new you know school cringing a new mass school cringing and you know i'm just so happy to see that the biden administration is willing to undertake you know the first steps in common sense cringe control <laughs> <laughs> so true so Beautifully true said. i i couldn't put it better myself and i think that we're gonna end on a high note there from our uh our esteemed guest david and his radical centrist take my gorillas thank you for listening david do you have anything that you would like to shill anything to get out there i have nothing i'm a, I'm a blue collar american you know I'm, I'm the the salt of the earth so i don't have anything to shill online we applaud you for Very that. respectable. And we applaud you for that. My Grillas, thank you for listening. Peace out. Yeah, I'm old as a boomer. My mindset on Zoomer. Everything cooler long as I'm not Laura Luma. If you think I'm not number one, I just spell that rumor. Hit that victory boy, yeah, on some motherfucking coochie. Default dance on a bitch. Hit the default dance on a bitch. Floss dance while I'm flossing in the whip. Victory Roy, yeah, when that chopper hit. Self-incrimination, I have no participation. News keep asking, I don't say shit, you can't have my conversation.